Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you are well and dandy today. That feels like the thing to say. Uh, welcome to Speaker Insight, where we help speakers, authors and coaches to build a portfolio business on your terms. My name is Helena. And I'm Kelly. And we are the founders of not only Speaker Insight, but also this fantastic group called The Connection Hub, where over 11,000 people are sharing opportunities, they're connecting with professionals like yourselves, your peers, but also the speaker agents, particularly a useful one for the talk that we're doing today, um, the publishers, the web designers, the support that you need to actually build that business so that it works for you in the way that you want it. Yeah, and we know we have a, world, a worldwide audience in that Connection Hub. Um, so we'd love for those of you who are watching, I can see some of you are watching live, to say hi. As always, tell us where you're watching from. We'd love to know what country or county, if you're in the UK, where you're watching from so we get to know our worldwide audience. Um, and also, if you're watching on the replay, we know that probably 70 to 80% of people watch our recordings on the, on the replay. We have a whole guide section in the Connection Hub, which takes you through all the topics, right? So therefore, if you think, oh, I need to do something about how to be a professional speaker, go and watch all of our training on there or how to do marketing. We've got our guides set out. So this video will go into the guides and a lot of people watch stuff on the replay. So if you're joining us on the catch up, put hashtag replay so that we know that you're there. And we, we always say, ask questions throughout, right? Whether you're watching this live, and this is definitely one I'm gonna prod and push you to ask questions. <laughs> um, but if you're watching it on the replay. Weird. <laughs> yeah, um, if you're watching on the replay, ask your questions and we'll always get back to you. Make sure that um, you, know, you tag us just to give us a nudge as well. It's awesome. First of all, we're going to do what we always do, give you an opportunity as well as us an opportunity to actually share what's been going on. We we call this the, the what's the buzz in your business piece. And we really do want you to share what's happening for you that's actually interesting or exciting that others might want to know about. So here we go. <laughs> So we'll kick you off. We want to, if you've got a buzz in your business, which is something you want to tell us about, put it in the comments and any links as well, more than welcome. The buzz that's going on in our business is that those of you who are Connection Hub members will know when we hit member milestones, we release a new feature. It's something to encourage you to invite people to the hub so we meet these member milestones, but also so we can celebrate with you and add more value because we're all about adding value in there. Right? <laughs> so Helena and I had our monthly strategy day last week. And we're putting our heads together about what this feature could be. What, what is it that we could add another dimension to the Connection Hub? Because recently we hit the 11,000 and over a member. So it's quite an achievement for us. Mm. And so it, those of you that are in the Connection Hub, you'll see one of the announcement posts at the moment is asking, this is what we think. We think maybe on a weekly or as some of the comments are coming in at the moment, maybe a monthly we will hold a live networking session in the Connection Hub. So people can actually uh, introduce themselves, ask for what they need or who they need to be connected with. And so members can actually start to really get to know each other on a, a personal basis and connect because that's the purpose of the Connection Hub. So again, if you're not a member in the Connection Hub, please join. Put your comments on that announcement post, whether you're up for that, whether you think that's a good new feature, whether there's any... Um, expert tips of networking sessions that you can give us to help us run those sessions if they go ahead. But that's our buzz. That's something that we're thinking of releasing for our new feature. So tell us in the comments, what's your buzz? Yes, for sure. And Nicola, it seems like you are making this a regular lunchtime slot. So Nicola <laughs> from Leicestershire, we love that you are here. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just great to actively build on the audience that you actually have and getting to know people more around the peers, you never know where that's going to lead. You know, we on average apparently know about 250 people, but those 250 people know 250 people and so on and so forth. So it's that connectedness. So we were just really excited about how do we connect people even more? You know, sort of we, we love connecting you to, to information, to sometimes entertainment, but also to to really just great great people that can support you helen i didn't know you were in france are you in holiday or are you actually have you moved there what's going I have, on you're not on holiday because you shouldn't be watching training videos while you're on holiday if you 
<laughs> this, the, we fall under entertainment today. That, 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 that's, that's what I'm. That's what I'm going to go with. Uh, uh, hang on, edutainment. I believe that that's the thing. <laughs> and I think I'm hesitating a little bit because this one's a bit weird. Because you know how we normally would be in. If you see the two of us, you kind of know that you're gonna, you're in for a learning session. If you see three of us, you know that you're in for a learning session. But with a guest in an style, you know, kind of guest expert. But our guest expert today at Speaker Insight is Kelly Tyler <laughs> from Stella Speakers. So it's a little bit strange. Most of you, uh, sorry, I'm just going to say distracted this. distracted by Helen's lives... comment on you. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I, I absolutely am. So Helen actually says, I live here for now, moving back to Greece next year, which is really, really great. So, so absolutely love that. Now, here's the thing. Most of you know that Kelly and I work on this business, the Speaker Insight business that we have for two days a week. So we, you know, we run other businesses as well. And so today I'm going to be interviewing Kelly where and we did talk about this I wanted her to wear a little Stella Speakers hat wearing her <laughs> Stella Speakers hat her 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 speaker agency is called Stella Speakers and she manages thought leaders and change makers so so that you can actually because one of the questions that comes up fairly regularly inside the connection hub is actually around how do I get an agent what do I need an agent for how can I actively work with one what do I need to ask what do I need to look for for who I am so actually we thought it would be a really good idea for for Speaker Insight to interview Kelly Tyler from Stella Speakers about <laughs> how speakers can actually generally just up their game, stand out from the competition, and most importantly of all, for some of you at least, um, charge oh, higher fees, oh. right? <laughs> Come on. So um, what, what have we got read, here? I'm going to read Nicola's bars. So her bars is she's planning a live event in October jointly with a sales coach. I've organized so many events for others. It's so exciting to organize one for herself. Oh. Good on you. I love that. And, and, and good on you for, for, for doing that with somebody else, because actually doing your first or one of the first things that you're doing with somebody else is a really, really nice thing to do. So, so let's get into it in this very weird um, Facebook Live that we're doing. <laughs> and, so, and there are lots of you watching. So I really encourage you to ask questions in this session. This is for people who might be want to be speakers and aren't speakers yet. Those of you who are speakers and going, oh, my God. How do I now speak with this new hybrid digital world? Or maybe your speakers that want to up your fees, like Hel Helena is saying. Whatever your questions are, type them in the comments, whether you're watching this live or on the replay, and I'll get back to you. Because I know, like yesterday, when I, I, I host a clubhouse room on your terms for us, and when I do a topic around speaking, people will just bombard me with questions all the time, and I love it. That's, that's the way I love to train. But that's why we're doing it in this session, so that you get to pick my brains as an agent, um, as well as as well as what we do in Speaker Insight, which still works for speakers, right? <laughs> so ask your questions is my prod nudge. <laughs> Yes, we will keep on doing it. And, and you know, don't be afraid to ask them as we go, because yes. that's what creates the conversation. So, Kelly Tyler, <laughs> let's, let's, let's start by just busting some myths. Like, in, and, and this start is working with Helena. Wow. <laughs> No, I'm joking. I don't know. That's really, really quite funny. So, so yes. So here, here's the thing. When, because this question is one of the ones that comes up quite a lot, you know, so I'm a speaker. I've been doing a little bit of speaking. When in my actual career of speaking, should I look to be managed by an agent? What's my okay. prompt for that? I'm going to bust some miss here. Let's get, let's get this out of the way because um, it's a, it's a, it's a misconception in the industry. So a lot of people will, um, you know, I can only talk from my, my own personal experience as an agent, but a lot of people will contact my agency and go, hey, I really want to be managed by you. And so we have a very in-depth process to go through because we are an agency and not a bureau, which means when you go with an agency, they normally manage a very select small group of people when bureaus have lots of people on their database who they probably have never met or don't know that very well. They've just got their bios, right? So we have a, a very select process. But the first question I ask people is like, okay, so what do you speak on? How long have you been speaking? Yeah. And I can probably say like 80% of the time, people have gone, well, I've just started speaking. And I'm like, then you should stop the conversation with me right now, okay? And this is one of the things. Agents, typically, when you want, when, when most speakers will work with an agent, it's because 
they are so busy as a speaker, they haven't got the time to do the contracts, paperwork, admin, negotiation of fees, all those types of things, that they need an agent to manage that side of things for them so that they can do their craft and do more speaking gigs. So predominantly, speakers come to agents, speakers should come to agents when they're quite overwhelmed and they're, when they're too busy for them to handle. Yeah. What then happens is then the agent will obviously take a lot of work off of them, but then increase the administrative work and the prospecting work by actually taking that off of them so, and, and bringing them more gifts so they can speak more. So this is the, the exchange of the, and, and most agents will probably charge you about 20% commission for doing all that for you. So they'll take the, they'll do prospecting, they'll do contracts, they'll do negotiation, they'll do all that type of stuff for you for a 20% fee and, and also find you the gigs. Yeah. However, you know, if you're looking to get an agent before you've even got any experience under your belt, any credibility, any assets, any testimonials any of that stuff it's way too early and you don't need an agent this is my point don't give away 20 percent of your fees for an agent until you really know you've established your marketing you've established your craft because you don't need an agent at that stage and most people think that they're going to apply for agencies to get their first gigs and that's not how it works so the the, the first thing to do is to build up your craft get really busy and then go for agency work does that help I think I think it really does. I'm going to say hi to hi to Sebastian. So you know, just as a loud and out loud thing, I just want to come back to you know, sort of. Um, so so I think you've defined an agency really well and defined actually the thinking behind it. So so that gives you gives people a bit of the timing. You mentioned bureaus as well. So so should I have an agency and a bureau? Should I start with bureaus? Should I just leave them alone? Like just just so that there's that in there. Yeah, just so that, that distinction in there it depends really it depends on you know you want to have to understand what your what your goals are as a speaker um when bureaus you'll really fight for work unless you've got some of the things that we'll talk about in this live today and you've really positioned yourself really well you'll get lost in a sea of people right if you're not um positioned as really well as as a what we would class a stellar speaker yeah. so and most of those bureaus won't even take you on Right. There are some, however, which I wouldn't class as bureaus, but they are online uh, directory type of thing. So you might have heard of things like eSpeakers or whatever. Right. That there are people that you don't pay to go on them. It's a similar deal. They're not actual representatives, but it works much more on SEO basis. Right. So if people are looking for a specific uh, merger and acquisition speaker, then you type that in and your SEO will come up higher if you've got a profile on something like eSpeakers and it's not very much to put yourself on there. And I would encourage that because it's a great place for people to write reviews if they booked you on there. So, yeah. But the SEO makes you come up higher. So yeah. there's no reason why anybody shouldn't be on those types of sites to ensure that you've got some SEO and some backing and some social proof. Yeah. But I, I still think it's a waste of time going for an agent or a bureau until yeah. you're too busy. And then the thing is, and this is one of the things, I know we've got quite a lot of speaker agents in the Connection Hub. Um, so again, they're in our speaker inside directory and you can connect with them. But you know, one that we work with or is quite active in the Hub quite a lot is Maria Franzoni. Zoni. I think a lot of you probably know her and we, we agree on a lot of stuff. But actually when you're going to, when you're ready to work with an agent, you're interviewing the agency as much as they're interviewing you, right? Every time. You're saying, okay, so this is my, I average five speaking gigs a week. This is the avatar audience that I work with. This is the price. Do you think that you would be able to get that type of regularity of gig with that type of client? Yeah. Tell us who you've done that for before. You know, what's your prospecting routes? How do you, how, where's, your, where's your database? You know, all yeah. this type of stuff interview them yeah. go with your figures of how how much you want to speak how much and um, how frequency how much and who to yeah. you've got to know this stuff it's not them interviewing you it is sure. but it's yeah. an exchange yeah 
Yeah. And so 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 I think I think that makes a lot of sense because there is a be prepared thing here because you're taking on a longer term partner when you are choosing to do an agency. And you are, as you say, you know, sort of like for the pleasure of actually being able to rock up and do your thing. You're still paying somebody to do all the bits that need to happen to make that happen. Right. Yeah. So yeah. so within all of this. So 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 taking it back a step from that, what's the question that you get asked most? Most often wearing your agent hat other than can you get me some gigs <laughs> yeah, for sure. well I, I'm sort of taking that one as a norm and just going yeah other than that <laughs> um, I think I think what what I find I have to um, talk to people a lot about is understanding their business model around speaking right, right. so there's a few things to consider a lot of questions on we've had quite a lot of debates in the connection hub around this is should speakers speak for free and should they, or should they speak or should they be paid speaking or should people even pay to speak at events right yeah. which is a whole different different model so and we've had trainers and you know there's people like elliot k in the hub that help people uh, craft their they, they're basically speaking to sell yeah so speaking is um is an art and it's a craft and it's a professional skill Yes. It's also a form of marketing. <laughs> so, and those people that use it as a form of marketing might not be trained as an art and a skill and a craft. Yeah. And that's fine. So you've got to understand how am I using speaking? Am I using speaking as a marketing tool, which might mean that you'll be doing uh, unpaid gigs in exchange for lead generation or selling at the back of the room or joint ventures or whatever it might be so that there it is a marketing model and that's the way that you you convert really well on stage you present really well on stage you're engaging with your audience and actually this is a really this is better than you doing Facebook lives or email marketing campaigns this is for your sure. thing, right if that's understanding then most of your gigs will be what we class as promotional gigs where you you get paid retrospect from what happens as a result of that speaking engagement. If you're a paid professional speaker and you do lots of these gigs, it's going to dilute your brand because the people that we would manage at Stellar Speakers averagely charge 10 to 20K for a half an hour keynote. There are some like Pippa in there that charge 40 to 50K a keynote. And if they started to then rock up and start to do free gigs, People are like, why have I just paid you £50,000 when you've just done the same talk to somebody else? So it can be, it's, it's not, one, it's not valuing your worth. Two, it's not keeping up the reputation of what you want to be known for and seen as out there when people start to talk. For but sure. two, it has to fit your business model. So when you're paid to speak, there is no lead gen. There is no paid at the back of the room. There is none of this yeah. because you're getting paid for your craft to be able to deliver beautifully, effectively with ROI in that half an hour, 45 keynote. And, and, and I think that's the, that's the key point here. There is an ROI for the people that you're delivering for in the or to the audience that they have put in front of you if that makes sense so 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 you're not actually just speaking to a crowd of people you are speaking to a crowd of people with a purpose and you've been engaged to actually deliver that yeah. purpose and that's yeah. the difference isn't it and let me caveat this because when we take our speakers on we would ask them about you know all their background and their fees and stuff and are there any um exceptions to the rule and i'd probably say most of our speakers would say do you know what i do three or five charitable gigs a year yeah. because this is my form of giving Give back. back so they might say if it's a charity or if it's this i'm happy to do but we'll all cap it at five a year or three a year whatever the quota might be mm. secondly if you need to create a new show reel, which we'll come on to later, yeah. a lot of the paid speaking gigs will not allow any of the footage from you doing those paid gigs to be released because it's confidential from that corporation. Uh, it's, you've been paid to be exclusive to them, so there's no way you can use any of that footage for commercial rights. Mm -hmm. So when a speaker show reel needs to be updated, which should be on a yearly basis, um, you basically might need to do some promotional gigs in order to get some new footage. And then that's fine. But you need to make sure that when you are talking to the event host, yeah. they know why you're doing this for free. And it's like, I don't speak for free ever. 
I have got three more, three gigs this year that I need to do for promotional that need to be in this setting and say this message, do you want me to do a gig for you for free when I'd normally be charging 10, 20,000 pounds for it? So there are caveats, but what I see a lot of people doing is they start charging a couple of grand for their paid speaking, and then they also do loads of free speaking at the same time, and their business model is confused. There's, there, there's a commitment level. So, so we get a lot of people come to us and say, I want to be a speaker. And we need to absolutely kind of just establish with them, what does that mean in your, in your income bracket? Are you saying that you want 40% of your income, for example, to come from paid speaking gigs? That would qualify you in that professional speaker element rather than the, I would like to be a speaker, but I've got the selling from stage element in my head or the, I am going to be speaking to smaller crowds of people from a yeah. marketing perspective, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm prodding these people that are watching. I need you to I, ask a question. I know, I know. She, you, I, you'll get the best out of her if you ask her <laughs> questions. Trust me, she'll be like a machine. So anything, there is no such thing as a silly question. There are only, there's only hesitation. So please, please, please ask what you want to ask, right? Um, yes. But whilst, whilst we do that, so, so wearing your, your agency hat, I come to you, I want to be managed by Stellar Speakers. What requirements do you have for somebody coming to you uh, and doing this? Um, so we have a lot of hoops for you to jump through, purely because, as I say, we're an agency, so we only have a small amount of people that we manage, and we know all these people intimately, like really well. They're friends, we know their businesses, we know their models, we know everything about them. It's not just, oh, there's their, there's their speaker bio, I think I understand what they're about. We yeah. have those quarterly meetings with them. We, we really are an, a working on them as, as an agent. So um, I, I shared, um, Helena, I shared the image with you that we, sure. we have when we basically... Shall I, shall I pop it up? Yeah, if you follow us on, on um, Facebook, then you'll see that we, we put this up quite a bit because this sort of helps people understand, yeah. are they ready to come and work with us? Because before you go in through filling all of our forms and having interviews with us, if you're not saying yes to these boxes, then you're not ready for us. Um, so the first thing for us, and this is really bespoke to stellar speakers, yeah. is whether you are a thought leader or a change maker. So that's the purpose around, you know, my own personal purpose and, and alignment is that I want to work with those people that are shaking up industries, that are doing stuff different, that are rocking the boat. Um, you might be a great Forex trader speaker, and I've nothing against that, but that's pretty standard, right? You're just talking about an industry and how to do it really well. I really want to look for how you're doing something different. So a lot of our speakers are TED speakers mm -hmm. because they, they've got ideas worth sharing, so they're thinking differently. I think that's the only one probably that is bespoke to this agency. Most of these other elements will be um, relevant for most agents and bureaus that you're looking for. Yeah. So the first thing that you need to have, um, and all these are assets that, yeah, yeah go on. I no, can't no, see. No, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. You sure? Because I can yeah. hear you saying something, but I can't no, see your it's, it's absolutely fine. Keep going. Okay. So the first thing to have is a professional bio, right? And also professional photo uh, photography. So a professional bio, we've done training in this in the Connection Hub. Um, you know, it's the basically making sure that you've got all of the positioning pieces in there to understand your credibility, your niche, your USP, your topics, your background, your um, experience, your credentials, all of these types of things. And then professional photography. And that photography obviously should be headshots, mm -hmm. but predominantly we also want you to have photography of you on stage, actually doing your craft, so speaking, in the action, ideally with really nice branded logos of the stages that you've spoken in the background or the size audiences so you can actually see it from over your shoulder of who you've spoken to and what size audience you've spoken to. Nice. So having a speaker bio um, and a professional photography is really important because this is basically what we'll be using to promote you. And if people don't know what you look like or can't in a snapshot understand your essence, then it's really hard for us to do that. We, this helps people understand about the speaking engagement. So we would want to in, in, ensure that you have spoken on several stages, paid stages, and you've also spoken to audiences 500 plus size. Mm -hmm. Unless you're a niche speaker, say for example, you are specifically doing a topic that's um, 
your speaking style is just to boardrooms or SLTs. Yeah. And that's still speaking, right? But it's actually a different size audience. It's, a much, it's actually quite hard. It's a much more intimate gig. And therefore, you need to have evidence of that and also know that that's actually your, your niche area. But generally, we say, how many paid speaking gigs have you done? What clients? And also, have you got the ability to speak to over 500 people? Yeah. People ask us, why is that question? <laughs> and for those of you who are speakers that are watching, there is a complete different mindset, body language, voice projection, all of these things change when the stages get much larger right the amount of space you have to use to actually portray your body language communication yeah. it, and you know there's so much to do this so it's really important that we can demonstrate that to our people that we're our clients that are booking you but also for us to have confidence that you can do small intimates and you can do large stages too I, I, I think I think there's something to be said for that as well. So for those of you who are watching and going, but I haven't done that. Great, wonderful, perfect opportunity for you to begin to actually put something in place that says, right, well, the maximum size audience that I've spoken to is 200 at the moment. How do I find audiences of, you know, places to speak that have audiences of 500 plus or lead myself into that? So so don't use this as a kind of bingo checklist that Kelly's kind of putting up. Actually use it as a, okay, great. If I'm serious about this, what do I need to have in place that actually works on this level? I'm going to yeah. put the thing back on and, you right. Yeah. And just on that, so, you know, and we'll talk about this in a minute, that you will have to, just like the speaker show or side of things, you might have to do some promotional gigs, even yeah. though we want them to be paid. We, we you know, there, there is opportunities for you to actually do expos, business expos. Mm -hmm and actually be on the main stage of a business expo. Normally you'd get that type of crowd on the main stage of those types of places. So it's that, that sort of, it is a milestone in your speaking career um, sure. to be able to, to achieve that. And so it, that's something, as Helena said, to actually be working up to and actually have a, a goal around that. Yeah, so we like that. Right, I'm going to pop that back up there so that we can we can keep going. I just thought, you know, sort of like, so I don't want anyone to be disheartened. I actually want you to really kind of go, yes, I could do this. I want you to be in a position where you go, hang on a second, because we talk about a portfolio business, about this blend of you being a speaker, author and coach. And actually, if you're more a coach or an author right now, but you'd like to get paid for, for speaking, use this as your opportunity to write the to-do list for the next six months that gets you to the stage where you could have a conversation with someone like Kelly yeah so this is this is important for every speaker and this is what's going to help you stand out right sure. if you understand your USP your unique selling point your keynote topics your you know just really what's different about you especially if you're something like a leadership speaker where there are literally millions of leadership speakers out there why would I choose you over all those other people and this can be down to your your style Mm -hmm. It could be because you are you 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 have a theme around your speaking. You might use props. I mean, there are some people that do um, leadership by the use of magic, right? And you know, there's something around what's what's different about how you deliver it. What's different about um, your keynote topics? Are you taking a pretty standard subject? and look at it from a completely different lens, right? It's one of the speakers that I, man um, uh, 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 I manage um, who basically looks at AI mm -hmm. through a completely different lens you've ever looked at it before. You know, obviously he used to be the CEO of Microsoft, um, chief envisioning officer of Microsoft, um, but he's just got that whole human resources relationship, people management and AI, the blend and the, the, in the geniusness that he comes up with is why he's a booked out speaker. OK, so think about your USP. That could be your personality, your style of delivery, your theme, your unique perspective on something. And also then your keynote topics that relate to that. Hmm. So therefore, what is the point that you're getting across? What is the training aspect? That you're actually or the outcome that you're saying you're going to give this company when they actually book you as a speaker yeah fantastic my next point is my soapbox which i'm sure people that have been in the house for a <laughs> don't long worry time. i'll drag her off if she keeps on going this is actually what my clubhouse room was about yesterday but um five percent of professional speakers have speaker show reels it's friggin ridiculous why people don't have these as an agent i cannot promote you 
without showing the client what you're like on stage. The Try before not, you buy, right? Try before you buy. The, the client's not got time to go and watch you come to a gig. Oh, they can come and see me this day, whatever. I need that three to five minutes of all of the key points. And, you know, we've got, we, we've done a lot of stuff on this in, 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 in Speaker Insight, but putting a show reel together is an art to get it to three to five minutes to have all the bits that we're looking for and what's going to convert to actually get you the gig. And I had a really good um, question from somebody in the clubhouse room yesterday saying, you're saying only 5% of people are, have speaker show reels, but when you, why are all those people in the bureau still getting booked? And I'm like, that's a really good question. Yeah. And my response was, it's because bureaus typically will manage celebrity speakers. Yeah. Celebrity speakers, you know, they don't need show reels because you see them they're on television. They're already on show. They're in the PR, right? I know their personality. I know what they're like. I know their style because I see them all the time. So therefore, they don't need to prove their credibility or show their style because people are already familiar with them. Yeah. It's the B-class content matter experts, predominantly my avatar, all these people watching here. You're experts in your own right. You're probably even really well known in your field. However, the majority of people will not know your name, right? Even if you have got a best-selling book, it's actually um, not, is that, that's actually not the thing that's going to help you, right? Mm. It's actually making sure that people understand what your, your speaking ability is like, your personality is like, and you can only get this across in a show reel. For sure. So my point here is that you need a show role. <laughs> <laughs> really, Kelly? Is is that what you're saying? Hang on a second. I'm just going to look at your face and go, is that what you're saying? Yeah, you so I'm, I'm going I'm to, otherwise I'm just going to get on. And I, everyone had an hour of me yesterday in Clubhouse ranting about this. For sure. So I have actually put, you know, we have done a training on what you need in it. So, so I have put that in there. But don't leave us yet because there's more. There's always more, right? Yeah. So the, I, I really want to emphasize People charge for their speaking because they are trained as a professional speaker. Yes. And they continuously hone their craft, right? They are continuously working on, especially in the last year, a lot of my speakers have actually had to do a lot of training on digital delivery. Virtual, right? yes. Remote you know, delivery. How to do icebreakers, how to do all these things, how to, what's the tech, which was never really one of the expected skills pre-COVID needed but now if you look at any of our speakers uh, speakers on stellar speakers in their media pack you'll see we have their digital qualifications we have their setup so you can see what their digital setup looks like and that gives the the booker confidence on that but they're also working on their 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 performance skills their voice coaching because it's a craft right yeah. You can't expect to be paying 30, 40,000 pounds for half an hour's worth of work and just expect that speaker to wing it, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, I might actually start a new soapbox on this. I, I was just, I, I actually could see the look on your face. I know that most of you can't see the look on Kelly's face at the moment because you can actually see the thing. But I'm looking at a face going, oh, dearie <laughs> me, here we go. Yeah. So, so the, you know, you can start off early with this. You've got Toastmasters. You've got the, P, uh, the Professional Speakers Association or the Public Speakers Asso uh, Association. You've got uh, various ways that you can actually be trained. There's lots of speaker trainer coaches in the Connection Hub. And there's the ongoing professional, you've got the NSA if you're out in um, the States. You know, there's lots of ways to actually give yourself that stamp of approval and make sure that you're upping your game all the time and you're in that industry where you're honing your skills. Yeah. But it's I very much working on what your specific needs are. And so that one-to-one -one coaching with somebody, yeah. you know, like Alex Mary is is in the clubhouse with me in my room and, you know, he works with the introverts and how to be, how to bring introverted speaking and actually make that difference in the world. So it's looking at your own requirements and continuously investing in yourself and your skills so that you're developing and we need to see evidence of that yeah for sure and and uh, you know sort of I took this off just to actually kind of emphasize we're all in charge of our own professionalism we're all in charge of what we actually know so take a good look do a little audit and go am I as good as I think I am what do I need that would add a string to my bow that actually is needed right now so I'm going to pop that back on go for it so again, this is this is this comes back to um, you know when you start to have a lot of these things, 
you can start to increase your fee for your keynotes. And most people that we would take on board would already be, be at the fee stage of charging £5,000 a minimum for a keynote. Because when you work with an agency, you're more than likely going to increase that fee because just having an agent mm -hmm. shows that you're agent worthy to the booker. And that already increases your fee anyway. Plus, also, we're normally better negotiators than most of our speakers. <laughs> um, and so we would increase your fees. But so that most of the people here who are charging 5K would expect to go up to a 10K keynote when we're managing them. Because not only are we doing those things, but we're also, as, as our agency, we work on your marketing, your positioning, all those types of things to help also increase the positioning and perception perception of who you are. So that's one of the requirements. That's not also always a requirement of all bureaus and agencies. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably say that early stage speakers, people that have, you know, been speaking for a while, but they haven't actually, um, they're not well known in the industry. The average speaking fee for those people would normally be about one or two grand for a keynote. So that gives you some sort of indication. Yeah, good. The credibility and the expertise in your field. So this is where when you are rather a content matter expert than a celebrity, this is actually going, OK, so how have you earned that badge? Is it through uh, qualifications? Is it through experience? Is it through research? What is the area that makes you an expert in your field? Mm. And how have you evidenced that? So how can you evidence that in your bio, in your showreel, in the way that you deliver and also in your presentation? So we really make sure credibility does come from having a best selling book, winning industry awards, being accredited by certain people, endorsements. They're all things that boost your credibility. But it's also I really want to know your expertise. So that's one of the things that um, we look for. Um, well, I've already mentioned this before about niching. So, you know, don't be a leadership speaker, please. Um, be, you <laughs> know, not, just, really? <laughs> just get lost. I mean, you have that in your keywords because obviously you'll want to be part of that. But when I'm like going, I want you to be a mergers and acquisition leadership speaker. So I, I help leaders go through mergers and acquisitions. Oh my God, that's so niche, right? Yeah. And then I'm already thinking, well, I could put you here and I could put you here and I know which companies are going through that at the moment and I can yeah. start prospecting. So the more that you actually get, and this is niche if you're American, <laughs> niche <laughs> if you're over here, but niche if you're American, when you're looking, this is coming back to that bespoke angle that you're looking at something on as well, that could niche you. Yeah. Your avatar or your audience can niche you. Right. So if you're saying that you're a leadership speaker, but you're only working with companies who have got 250 to 300 staff because you know that there's a certain growth element that happens here, an expansion or a capacity issue that, you know, all companies go through. And this is your sweet spot. Then that's your niche because you're niching in a certain area of your avatar. And, so and it really does. I mean, you know, sort of there, there, there's something to be said for it. It makes you want to be in a position where the person who is working with and for you is actively excited and really has the ability to go out and go, yep, I've got the perfect peg for that shaped hole. Thank you very much. We'll, we'll take that. I, I did actually, <laughs> I'm just going to share this right here. Um, niching and inching has the same letters in it. And that's actually really quite a quite a good thing because niching is you inching, like yeah, literally inter. setting that inch rather than, you know, sort of like a, a mile wide uh -huh. and an inch deep doesn't actually kind of work. But a mile deep allows you to just go, yes, this is the perfect person. And it's much more easy to place you. So niching is inching. And I really, really like that. Right, here we go. You've got to right. think how, when, how agents and bureaus work. They get the requests coming in and our brains work a little bit like a file fax system don't get me wrong we have crm systems and you're all tagged in different areas but when we go we know exactly who that is because we start making those filters in our brain go audience topic personality you know does that person swear a lot whether well, they're, they're not going to suit to the values of that company or whatever it might be yeah. and we start filtering who we're going to put forward yeah. based on those those areas of, of positioning and niching or niching yeah, it makes sense Right. OK, so there's just a couple more to do. So um, we want to make sure that you have testimonials. Right. So a lot of the stuff you're going to say about yourself is great. I think we did. Uh, we did a training in our membership group about testimonials. But um, it's the fact of actually knowing that the testimonial is actually not just saying, oh, I had 
Bob speaker are, and he was great. I mean, I don't, that's, that's, doesn't help me, doesn't help the booker. I want to know about what results they got. I want to know what it was about your delivery style that they liked. I want to know about where that aha moment dropped for them. I want to know what they did as a result of that. So all of these types of things are what I mean by testimonials. And it's really important for you to get, you might not, um, for confidentiality point of view, you might not always get the person's name and the person's company. Sometimes they might be okay with just the company. And sometimes you can't even put the company. But you could say a Fortune 500 company or this, blah, 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 to give them the essence of who that would. Yeah, exactly. You can still put the um, the actual testimonial up in both written and video forms, depending on how you're going to market it. And, and and that is that social proof, like just so that we're really clear. It's the social proof, like people like to hear we're in a culture nowadays where we expect other, we, we expect to read reviews, we expect to listen to and be influenced by others. So therefore, make sure that you actually tick that one. Yeah. And so the other thing, it works a little bit like publishing. Um, so people will know that if they're going to go for a traditional publisher, traditional publishers love for you to already have an existing social media, the email database, PR reach type of thing. So, you know, the magic 5,000 people on your email database or social media is what publishers go, oh, they've got a good n network to work with. We don't have a number like that, but because we want to make sure that you've got a presence yeah. that you that people can actually find you that they can go and uh, see what your personality your values and your style is just in the way that you show up you don't have to be on every platform um and also sometimes having being part of the event and actually being part of the marketing not as an exchange i'm going to email my people or i'm going to promote this but sometimes that's a nice way of actually working especially with the corporates to say if it's an open event where everyone can uh, attend, because most of the time it isn't, but how can I add value by emailing something else later on to the audience? How can you use some of your database to actually promote what they're doing at their AGM or whatever it might be? What I'm trying to say here is that we like to see that you are a social influencer and it's not just you out there. You've actually got the proof of people following you for what you do and what your content is. And then I've already mentioned this one before about in showreels, but now obviously we have the additional requirement of you being able to deliver digitally. So there might be the um, going back to um, e-speakers, they do do a digital presentation qualification certification thing for about 50 quid where you can go and have an interview with them and then you get uh, certified as a digital speaker more for the tech than the presentation but again that's really good for you to actually put in your bio or your show reel to show that there's some sort of peace of mind for a booker that you know how to deliver digitally from a tech point of view you're not going to have your wi-fi and no ethernet cut in and not a good mic and all the lighting and stuff Everybody likes a stamp of approval in some way, don't they? So I'll, I'll pop that link in for you in a, in a second. Um, so, so we sort of mentioned this whilst you were going through this, but what do I do? Okay, so, you know, so I think everyone's got a much bigger sense of what actually kind of is required and needed. But what if somebody doesn't have those things in place? Yeah, I'd love to, I'd love to know for the people that are watching yeah. the people on the replay, out of all of those things that I just mentioned, how many of you have those things? If they are, we might have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's but, always useful. <laughs> but also, if you don't have those things in place, please also put no, because I think it's also really useful for people to know that most people aren't at this stage, okay? Yeah. Most speakers are, you know, even really good speakers don't always have the marketing collateral around them or haven't quite positioned themselves really well. They're really good at speaking and they get speaking gigs from referrals. But actually, when you're doing the green flag in the sand and this is what I stand for and this is my bio and this is my showreel and this is my niching and this is all the stuff that really yeah. makes you stand out, yeah. brings you up a level. Most people don't have it. So I don't want you listening to be beating yourself up, but I do want you to set a new standard for yourself. Yeah. And so, you know, what we would say for, for most people, and this is why, especially since COVID, um, we've had a lot of people that have had to, even some of our stellar speakers didn't have the digital stuff. So they had to go back and actually, you know, get trained in that. Is um, we, we created a program called Rising Stars where we would support you 
um, for the whole year in creating all of those assets. So the show reels, the avatar, the t- keynote titles, uh, your bios, your niching, uh, how to get testimonials, all those types of things, because people need to be, um, they also need the training and support in how to put that stuff together. So um, that's a, a program that we've put together. And also in there, it's called Rising Stars. In I there, you also the link in there. Oh, thanks, Sam. In there, you also get quarterly training from myself and my team on topics that are really uh, trending. Um, my marketing director does monthly industry trends, so you understand what's going on in the industry and does all the reports. Um, we have you know, interviews with all of our professional experts like videographers and people like that, so you understand how to put a showreel together. So it's a, And the main thing is, is that we promote speaking opportunities in there. So you'll Yay! see... <laughs> there's posts that you'll get you'll get emailed as soon as an opportunity comes up for you to apply for that you can actually start to build get the footage for speaker show reels you can actually you know start to practice some of your keynotes and get those testimonials and those feedbacks yeah. so and it's like 59 pounds for the whole year no contract needed so it's not like we're charging a lot of money we're really breaking wanna, the bank <laughs> we want to create a community with lots of resources that really help you on your and it's it's a speaker journey right the work that helena and i do is very much around speakers authors and coaches and business management this is around marketing and asset creating to help position you as a speaker so that you can stand out and charge more and get more gigs so you know, that's one of the things I would say, if you haven't got these things ready, start doing some promotional speaking to mm-hmm. get those those um, speaking on stages, those testimonials, that video footage for your showreel. In, in the Rising Stars program, we have a directory in there as well of how to teach you how to prospect these stages. And it's also got hundreds of stages and places to prospect to do these promotional gigs. Yeah. So these are the things to work on and also um, when we've got so much training in the hub as well to help you with other stuff. <laughs> well, I, I, I put one tiny one in at the moment, but you can actually go through the guides inside the hub that, that, that'll that really help you. But if you are serious about the speaking piece, then you've probably already started making the list or hopefully have started making the list from what Kelly was actually saying earlier on. This, this kind of becomes almost a no brainer around, okay, what do I want to transition to? And for a lot of, so wearing, wearing, our speaker insight hat around the helping you manage and grow your business it is that whole thing of actually i'm not ready to add speaking as an income line yet in my business but i can be getting ready to do that alongside the work i normally do so that could be your quarterly or indeed the the next two quarters project that allow you to go actually in 2022 i want 20 percent, 40 percent of my income to come from being a professional speaker in yeah. order to make that happen what do i need to do now that allows that to happen right yeah. and i think i think the biggest question that's probably on somebody's head was that glaringly obvious square that said that said show reel and that ridiculous soapboxy 5% of people have one so because you've just already said that you need some good footage and it shows you in the in the right light and you get the experience what can people do kelly to actually just start that ball rolling yeah so i think that what a lot of people don't think they're ready for and i think is a really good stretch especially for our audience because most Mm. of you are thought leaders and change agents is apply for a tedx talk ah yeah (laughs) it's one of those things like that there are so many stages out there and it's a real stretch to get your key messages into such a short, succinct amount of time mm-hmm. that for an agent or a book or even you know an event manager, that's a real good indication that you can hone your craft yeah. to be succinct, succinct and impactful. And also that you've got an idea worth sharing. So this is about that unique viewpoint that you've got on stuff or that experience and credibility that shows that uniqueness. And having TED or TEDx in your showreel footage is a great thing to have, right? Because it's that, that, that it's like a stamp of approval from an industry where it's actually quite tough to get in. And yeah. so one of the things that we've done, we've recognized that as at Stella and we've created a, a very short program with TEDx curators, TEDx speak, TED speakers, TED coaches, and um, we've also in there got a directory of all TED stages and the people that manage them so that you can contact them. But this is helping, this program helps you understand 
why most people don't make it through the application process. <laughs> so the curators will be telling you what they look for and how to make sure that that TEDx um, process application is successful. Then we get to, okay, now I've got, I've got the gig, how do I do it? And Ted will provide you with coaching when you get to that stage. But we've given you a head start with storytelling coaches and people in there that are actually helping you with your art and your craft. And then we tell you how to use your TEDx in your promotion as a speaker. So actually how to promote that TEDx gig once it's done, once it's recorded and done, how to use it as one of your marketing tools. So that's a, a really short course. Again, 29 quid or something, I think it is, or four, I don't know what it is. It's under 50 quid, but yeah. it's a really short course to actually do to get that first step and then get the TEDx um, stages booked as one of those stages to include in your show reel. As yeah. I said, use the Rising Stars platform to be applying for the gigs, to do more gigs, mm. to get more footage, to get more confidence, to get testimonials, to test your message out, all these things which are actually helping you um, develop. And basically just go through the essentials program in Rising Stars and you'll come out with all of those assets. So yeah. you basically will have what most speakers don't have that makes them stand out, that makes them look professional, which gives them the right to be able to charge more for their gigs. And therefore, once you get to the end of the Rising Stars and you've got those things, then we're really open to managing you as a speaker and then just yeah. elevating your performance up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit like you have your own internal kind of stamp of approval because people have been going through. So you know that they have the assets that you want them to have. And again, it, I hope a lot of you are really hearing that it is about you managing your speaking career and managing it before you get to an agent so that they can help work alongside you collaboratively with you with that filing filing cabinet in mind, you know, little file of facts. I think you dated yourself a little bit when you said that. <laughs> But it's, it's fine. We'll let you off on that one. You know, it, but it is. It's this whole thing of how can I prepare? So whether you are looking right now, whether you're a speaker who's already looking, who's already doing professional speaking and you want to increase your audiences, your income, etc. You'll know out of those, there will be something somewhere that you go, mm, I could hone and tweak that little a little bit. Or whether you're someone who's actually going, you know, I've been doing this thing for a while, but I really want to bring in speaking because I see how I can make my impact impact on the world so much bigger. I have a wider message. Most of you have a really big message and most of you are playing small around it, even mm -hmm. if you think you're playing big. So the world needs thought leaders and change makers right now, which is partly why we're really pushing this whole thing around speaking, because speakers make a difference to the world through, to, through, through getting through to the individuals who are learning from them who are inspired by them and that's why we're saying it is an art and a craft but it's one that can make a massive difference in the world so yeah that's that's we're where it's supporting at. massive difference well bloody needs it i know that <laughs> yeah that's exactly it which is why you do what you do within speaker insight and within stellar speakers so <laughs> it it's up to me to say thank you kelly tyler of stellar <laughs> speakers for joining us today um yeah. and it's been a delight People and asking those questions guys whether it's on the live now or on the replay or in the connection or wherever it is you know it's that's what we're here for this is something that we know a lot about so make sure that you ask us and pick our brains yeah and on that note we'll leave you to the rest of your week have a have an effective efficient productive and decisive one we will see you soon Bye.